share my screen. Right. How can I hide the All right. Right, um, so good morning, uh, good evening, and good afternoon, um, depends on where you are. And um, I'm Joseph Jiang, and today I'm very um, uh, happy to stay here and present my uh, uh, PhD's work. And the topic is about the physics uh, in the uh, osmotic pressure gradient. And I'm going to split my talk into two parts. The first one is the motion in the osmotic pressure slope and we call this diffuse hysteresis. And the other part will be the deformation uh, in the osmotic pressure uh, gradient. And because I'm talking about the osmotic pressure, I need to spend some time um, uh, introducing what the osmotic pressure is. So the osmotic pressure um, is something that uh, happened in the liquid. Um, if you um, take a look of um, two parts of liquid, and on the left side, you have pure water. On the right side, you have some salty water. And, and in between, I use a membrane to separate these two liquids. And the membrane has ability to uh, select the water molecules. So the water molecules can penetrate the membrane without uh, any resistance, but the salt molecules are not able to penetrate. So in this case, uh, water molecules are freely uh, diffusing through the membrane and without the resistance. And in this case, you will find that the right part is thirsty. And uh, they want to take the water from the left part continuously until the, uh, the balance reach. So in this case, after the, uh, the system reached the balance, um, the right side has a higher level than the left side. And so to maintain this difference of the level, um, this pressure is called osmotic pressure. Now I'm going to remove the membrane and replace the membrane with a particle here. So under the osmotic pressure gradient, can the particle drift or can the particle move? So the reason we ask this question is the osmotic pressure is the result of a diffusion, the diffusion of water. It's not a real collision of the particles. So if this is not a collision and we put a particle there and we maintain osmotic pressure, by a gradient by using some salt concentration gradient or polymer concentration gradient, can the particle drift? So this is a question we want to know, uh, can the particle drift in the concentration gradient? All right, so to uh, observe the, the drift, there should be done some experiment. So there are uh, some experiment uh, have, been, have been done in the last few years. And uh, what people find is the particle are able to drift in the concentration gradient of the salt. So we call it the solute. And this phenomenon is called the diffusophoresis. The experiment is easy to understand. There is a T-channel, the micron channel. And if the horizontal channel has a higher salt concentration, the, the salt they use is sodium chloride. Um, let me use a pointer here. So pointer. All right, so the salt concentration. And if the vertical channel has uh, uh, dilute uh, or the, the concentration is low, then they have some cold, uh, polymer particles coming uh, coming down. And in this case, they find if there is a salt concentration gradient at the cross, then they see the drift of the particle. So there is a movie to show um, the particles are coming down from the top and uh, they drift to the left. So this is a phenomenon to show the particles able to drift in the concentration gradient. But if you uh, look inside what's going on here, you will find that because the solute they use is salt, the salt will deionize in the water. So you have the sodium ions and the chloride ions. So these two ions have different diffusivity. They diffuse in different rates. So the chloride diffuses faster. So you can think about this as uh, so Michael Jackson dancing in the water. Um, but the sodium is like a dancing elephant. So if they diffuse in different rates, then in the liquid, they have different concentration locally, right? If the concentration is different, then in the, the liquid is not neutral. The, there is an electric field. If the, uh, the particle is charged, then under the electric field, the particle is going to drift. So we want to see the particle drift in the osmotic pressure. But this experiment has two things 
uh, coupled. The first one is the uh, osmotic pressure caused by the uh, solute. The other is the electric field. So if we want to see the, uh, the drift of particle in the osmotic pressure, we need to remove other mechanisms. So to remove the other mechanism, we can replace uh, the salt, the solute, by using some neutral polymers. So here is uh, some theory. So to use the polymer particles um, to create uh, the gradient um, is easy to use in drying process. So you have the colloid particles suspending the water, and those particles um, in the evaporation just descend, and the water surface descend and create a gradient, right? Then we put a large particle inside and to see if the particle is able to drift uh, in, the, in the concentration gradient. So the theory suggests that if there is a concentration gradient, there will be an osmotic pressure gradient. So on, in the osmotic pressure gradient, the, the, the water is going to flow from the uh, low concentration and to going to dilute the concentrated area. So if there's a water flow, the particle is uh, expected to drift. But the theory suggests that yes, the experiment is not easy to get. So the, uh, the experiment have been done by uh, some groups. What they use is to, uh, to dry some, uh, to, to evaporate the mixture of particles. What they have is um, uh, the large particles and the small particles, they mix together uniformly at the beginning then put it in the petri dish and the bake, right? After the water uh, evaporates, they have uh, dry colloid particles and they find the small particles on the, uh, on the top and the large particles on the bottom. So they find the segregation, the separation, and they can use some um, AFM or a very uh, uh, powerful technique to measure the concentration gradients of the different species. And they find the large particle and the small particle separate at different uh, height. And they try to interpret this uh, experiment by using some simulation. And in the simulation, they find that uh, the large particle and small particles separate because in the drying process, the small particles accumulate on the air water interface and create a, a gradient and push those large particles moving down. So this is uh, uh, the experiment and simulation they've done. Um, here is a problem. Um, what they um, have measured is uh, concentration of particles at the end of drying. And it's not clear if the large particle drift in the uh, concentration gradient because the uh, other mechanism could cause such segregation. For example, the gravity. The small particle and the large particle had different gravity, different weight. So they were separate in the vertical direction. And if there's some flow uh, induced by drying, then that flow will also impact the separation. So um, we want to see the diffusive phoresis alone to um, cause such uh, effect. But if we don't have the process observations, it's hard to see the large particle is able to drift, right? So the objective of this project is because we don't know if the large particle can drift, can move uh, in the presence of the pressure gradient, then we need to observe this process. So we need to use experiment uh, to demonstrate uh, the motion of the large particle in the um, uh, drying colloids. Then we can quantify the the speed of particles estimate the osmotic pressure gradient, then we are uh, going to see, do they have the drift, right? So the experiment we've done is to using the confocal microscopy um, to look at the drying process. So the experiment um, uh, happened into a sandwich structure. So we have two glass slides and they are hydrophobic. Um, and we put the small and the large particle mixing the water and they are confined between two slides and the hydrophobic slides um, can remove the pinning, right? And the large particle and the small particles are labeled by using different flores and dyes. So the small particles, um, the size is a 15 nanometer, so you cannot see the single particles under the microscope, but the large particles is sub-micron, and you can see the individual large particles. The, the green dot are the large particle, and the red colors are the fluorescence of small particles. So in this case, I just mix them together and let the drying happen and bake this, um, this droplets. And I want to see if the particle drift. Um, so in the drying process, we, uh, we have the phenomenon that the particles will accumulate on the air water interface. 
So on the water edge, the concentration is higher than the center. So if the large particle drifts from the edge to the center, then we can confirm there's a the drift. But the experiment seems not easy to see because from the experiment, we see there's a huge flow. If we want to see the drift, we need to remove other effect. But the flow, um, the presence of flow uh, doesn't allow us to see the drift clearly. So to remove the flow, the first things we need to do is to uh, figure out uh, why there's a flow. So the flow coming from the convection. And you can think about the ocean convection uh, on the Earth. Right? Um, the Earth had, uh, has a warm um, equator, warm place, and the cold place. And at the warm place, the water is warm and the density is small, but on, on the cold side, the density is larger. So the heavy water is going to sink and the, uh, the warm water is going to rise. Then in this case, you see a convection um, globally. Now my droplet actually is a small ocean. So if I have the particle drying in the droplets and those particles just accumulate on the edge of the droplets and this area is heavier than the center. So these particles are going to sink and cause a convection. So um, if the density of the particle in the water is not the same, then the convection is not avoidable. So we need to use the particle and the same mass density of the water um, to do this experiment. So what I've done is to using the density match. So I'm going to show you the, the convection flow in, in, the, uh, in the vertical direction and to um, give you some idea how does the flow look like. So if the, uh, the particles are heavier than the water, and it's a mismatch, the density is a mismatch, then the convection uh, looks like this. So on the top, the particles just flow out and on the bottom, the particles flow in. So you have a convection look like this. And if you overmatch um, the, uh, the mass densities with the water heavier than the, than the particles, then the convection direction flip. So you have the lot particles uh, uh, flow uh, out on the bottom and the particle flow in at the top. So the, uh, to match the mass density, I use a polystyrene particle. This is a plastic particle. The plastic particle has a density around 1.05 and we use the, the normal water, H2O, and the heavy water, the D2O, and mix them to match the density because the density of the particle, the polystyrene is between is two liquids. So after we change the ratio of the H2O and the D2O, we can get the perfect match. So in the Z direction, there's an, uh, the, the flow is in the same direction. And there's no convection, all right? So um, under this density match, um, I'm going to make a, a flow chart to get you easy understanding how does this uh, experiment going up. So the experiment that I've done is to using as a polystyrene particle with different size, with small particle and large particle mixed in the water uniformly. And the water we use H2O and D2 to match the density. And we can change the salt concentration to adjust the uh, slope of the gradient, right? So we use a microscope to look at the location of large particle. And we can also measure the fluorescent intensity of small particles, right? And after that, I have the speed of particle and I have the concentration profile of the small particles. Here, the concentration, I use a volume fraction to quantify it. The volume fraction is the volume of the total volume of the particles divided by the total volume of the containers. Right? Then we get the, uh, the concentration. Then I'm going to correlate the concentration to get the graph, the speed as a function of, of the concentration gradient. And then I convert the concentration gradient into the osmotic pressure gradient and to see if the speed change with osmotic pressure gradient. Right, so the experiment results are here. I just take a slice of uh, the droplets and zoom in um, this part, and I have uh, the a video of large particles. So what do you see? Those particles are large particles, and I put a reference here. On the top, uh, this is just the water. The particles, the large particles in the pure water, and you can see the running motion, and there's no drift. The particles just uh, um, twinkle, twinkle, and uh, without the, the drift um, or the distant drift. Um, the, the next video I show, if I put some small particle inside, then you will find that the larger particles has a motion towards the center. 
So these two videos just give you the difference with the small particle and the without the small particle, the motion of the large particles is different. Then what I can measure is the trajectory of the large particles. So here, I just show you the trajectory of those particles. The red color actually is the fluorescent intensity of small particle. So from the in intensity of the color, we know the concentration of small particles and the green lines are the, are the paths of the large particles. And you can see the very obvious drift uh, in the uh, in the droplets, and I can measure the speed uh, at the functional time at the different place. This is a, a speed of large particles, and I can also measure the uh, concentration of small particles. So the concentration close to the edge is higher than the concentration close to the center. All right? Then I'm going to uh, correlate the speed and the water, uh, and the concentration. Then I get a, a figure like this. All right, so from this figure, uh, we know I do the concentration gradient and the vertical axis is the speed of large particles. And when the concentration gradient is small, I see an increasing, uh, a linear increase um, of the speed with the concentration gradient, and then they reach a plateau. And the, the red dash line I put here is the moving speed of the droplet. The droplet is shrinking. So the contact line is moving. The, the speed of contact line uh, look like this. So that means when the particles are close to the edge of the droplets, then they have the same speed. The speed doesn't um, increase anymore. And uh, those particles uh, are pushed by the uh, contact line. And I have done uh, some experiment by changing the salt concentration um, at different salt concentration. So at the lower salt concentration, the particle-particle interaction is larger. So I see the, the larger slope and for the, uh, uh, when I increasing the salt concentration, the slope dropped up. And then uh, to, um, to verify if the osmotic pressure play a role in this case, I just uh, convert the concentration gradient into an osmotic pressure gradient by uh, using the model here. Um, then I find this uh, three curves overlapped. So that means under the in osmotic pressure, if the osmotic pressure increase, then the drift speed increase. So we are able to see the particles able to drift in a pressure gradient. Now, uh, I'm going to make a summary for the first project. We designed some experiment um, to um, remove the convection by match the mass density. Then we see the large particle is able to drift uh, in the concentration gradient of small particles. And this is um, uh, some evidence to show the particles is going to drift um, in a gradient. And we also plot the, uh, the drift velocity as a function of concentrated gradient. And we see uh, at the small concentrated gradient, they increase linearly and reach a plateau at the high concentration gradient. And after we convert the concentration gradient into osmotic pressure gradient, then uh, we see uh, the speed is increasing with the osmotic pressure. So, um, so this is the first part of the, um, of the uh, thesis. And the main idea is to see the motion of the particle in a gradient. Then the next part will be the deformation in the gradient. Uh, um, the question is followed by, uh, if the particle is going to drift, there's a flow in, in the concentration gradient, then what's the local force? What's the force exerted on the particle? So if there's a flow, there should be some force. So there is a paper describe the force uh, the distribution around the particle if this particle is in a concentration gradient, right? And they use uh, theory derivations and get a result of the force field around the particles and they find this local force is not uniform. So if the force is not uniform and if this particle is able to deform, then the particle is going to deform from a spherical shape to a non-spherical shape. So if the deformation keep going, it will distort the, that particles. And this paper uh, just uh, use some uh, simple idea to interpret uh, what's going on here is they said the, uh, the pressure on the particle is proportional to the osmotic pressure uh, inside uh, the, the liquid. And, but they also claim that there are less experiments um, describe such phenomenon. And we need to use the experiment to see if the particle is going to drift in the concentration gradient, all right, uh, deform. All right, so um, to see the deformation, we need a very, very soft particle. 
So the soft particle we use is a water droplet. That's the uh, softest in the world we can find. So um, the experiment, we are using the drying experiment. So this is uh, uh, a drying channel and uh, we made the channel in the lab and um, you can see there are two slides, glass slides, and then we use some spacer uh, to separate the slides and we can change the, the gap. And we load the colloidal suspensions um, in the channel and the liquids or the suspensions evaporate from the site, from the site. And during the evaporations, the water goes out and causes a flow. Then on this flow, this particle just flow with the water and packed on the air, air water interface on the air side. And we create a concentration gradient, right? So this concentration gradient is very sharp. And if you zoom in, you can see the oil droplets. If we put the oil droplets in the gradient, is um, they need to exert some force on the droplet. Then the experiment shows the first experiment by the oil droplet is we find if we have the wrong shape oil droplets and this droplet is just uh, uh, suspending in the colloids. And we find that when this droplet is moving to the uh, packed region, the wrong shape deform into a, a non spherical shape. All right, now I'm going to just uh, uh, spin this figure by 90 degree. And oh, we have the, um, uh, the video here. So we have a packed region with a very large um, concentration um, in the packed region. And the packed region has oil droplets. And from the uh, experiment, we see this oil droplet just deformed. And in the colloids, we just uh, put some uh, white dots. That's a tracer particle. Those tracer particles allow us to measure the flow uh, profile or the concentration profile around this droplet. And from the um, relative distance of those particles, I'm able to measure the concentration uh, far away from the droplet or close to the droplet. So here is uh, concentration um, evolution in the Z direction. And you can find that this concentration increase from the uh, 0.4 to 0.7 and with time, all right? And from the deformation of the droplets, we find that in the concentration gradient, this droplet deform non-uniformly and the front back symmetry breaks. So it's not a symmetrical shape, it's a, um, a symmetry structure. Then we want to know how does the osmotic pressure correlate with the, um, the droplet shape. So the objective of this project is uh, we need to figure out the relation between the deformation of the droplets and the osmotic pressure, right? And we need to uh, quantify the uh, deformation of the droplets and we need to estimate the uh, osmotic pressure. So to get this um, things done, the first project is to um, quantify the deformation. So deformation of the droplets we define by measuring the uh, radius of the curvature of the droplets. For deformed uh, droplets at a different orientation, that deformation um, is uh, not uniform and we can measure the curvature um, and the curvature has the radius, right? And I use this radius to subtract the initial radius of the droplets to see the difference. And from the experiment, we can see the deformation ev uh, evolve with time. The, and the result shows at a zero degree, uh, the deformation is the maximum. And the, on the two sides, the 90 degree, the two sides, the deformation is less than the zero degree. So this is the way we define the deformation. The next one is um, to estimate the osmotic pressure. To estimate the, uh, the pressure, we need to know the uh, concentration, right? the local concentration. So we need to use the tracer particle to measure the evolution of the concentration uh, around the drop, droplet. And at a different angles, we find uh, I just show the concentration at the zero degree, 180 degree and uh, 90 degree, and also the uh, concentrations far away from the droplet. And the result shows as for the different size of the droplet, um, the concentration around the droplet is different. So when this droplet is small and um, around the 34 micron, then you see this concentration uh, are close with each other. But for the larger droplets, the 40 or the 50, then you find that the concentration has a larger difference. And the deformation of the droplet just shows the larger the droplet is, the larger the deformation is. So the larger deformation coming from the larger difference of the concentration. 
right? So uh, the same thing, I make a flow chart to help you understand what's going on here. So the experiment I've done is to using a water droplet in the colloids. And what I can measure is the concentration around the droplet. And I use tracer particles to measure the, the speed of the flow. And I can also measure the curvature of the deforming droplet as a function of the orientation angle. And to understand why does the concentration distribute around the droplets, um, I need to do some simple simulation. We develop some simulation and by using the measurement, experiment measurement as a boundary condition. So we use a volume fraction and speed far away from the droplet as a boundary condition and using a, a diffusion equation to solve the, uh, the, the concentration. And because this uh, packed region uh, is between the liquid and the solid, so it's hard to see as a solid or liquid. So we put the, um, some theoretical Poisson's ratio here to uh, correlate the speed in the two orthogonal directions. And we solve the steady state solutions when the concentration changes over time is zero. And after those uh, calculation, I'm going to map the concentration profile. So with the concentration, I can use hot sphere to get the osmotic pressure. And here I made a assumption here, the surface stress on the droplets balance with osmotic pressure. Then in this case, I using this balance to estimate the curvature of the droplet, right? So um, here is the simulation result. And the other droplets, I put a hole here. Um, uh, with the droplets, I can see the evolution of the concentration uh, in the x and the z direction. And at the beginning, you can find that the, um, the concentration close to the air side is larger than the zero, uh, zero degree. So, but after uh, some time, we still find at some point, this concentration at zero degrees is heavier, uh, is larger than the 180 degree. And if you just uh, look from the top, you can find the 180 degree and the zero degree has larger concentration than the two sides. So the two sides has a minimum concentration. Now I'm going to, um, uh, the air side is on the top. Now I spin this air side to the bottom and um, to get uh, to just a switch 180 degree. Then I can find that I convert the volume fraction, the concentration into the osmotic pressure profile by using the theory. And I get the osmotic pressure around the droplets is not uniform. And with zero degree and 180 degree has uh, the larger uh, osmotic pressure. And I can just make the balance. The change of the osmotic pressure is uh, equal to the surface stress of the droplet. Since this droplet want to keep the wrong shape and um, because of surface tension, but if we put some stress on the droplet, it's going to deform. So this uh, two force should get into balance. And I just use the simulation to, um, uh, to convert into the uh, osmotic pressure, then predict the shape. So at the beginning, if it's the flat line, and then I got the spherical shape, but after I make this balance, I got the non-spherical shape and with the eye air sides uh, on the bottom, right? So I'm going to interpret uh, this process um, because as I said, uh, the osmotic pressure is the result of the diffusion of the water. It's not a real collision on the droplets. Uh, then uh, what's going on? If this is not collision, why can't we write this, uh, this balance here? Um, so um, I think a persuasive um, uh, interpretation about the osmotic pressure play a role in the deformation is under the osmotic pressure, there will be a water flow. That water flow is going to flow around the droplets and the, uh, the global flow is going to give the uh, drift, that's a diffusive resistance. But if you zoom in the surface of the droplet and there should be some shear, that shear will create the force and exert on the droplet and deform that droplet. And the shear has a length scale. Uh, this length scale, um, you have no choice. That's a particle, a small particle size because the osmotic pressure is caused by small particles, the presence of small particles. So I have no, uh, no choice. Then we choose the, uh, the less skew as the radius of small particles. Then under this small skew, there's a very huge shear and the shear is going to uh, uh, distort or deform the water droplet. All right, so uh, at the end, I'm going to uh, just uh, compare the 
uh, curvature from the simulation and the experiment. So the, uh, the thick line is uh, uh, experimental data and the thin line is from the simulation and they uh, match each other at the different sides of the droplet, right? So we can see um, the osmotic pressure around the droplets, the non-uniform pressure is going to deform this droplet. All right, so let me make a summary for this project. That is, we designed the experiment um, to using a uh, water droplet and to see the deformation in the concentration gradient. And we map the concentration gradient by using the tracer particle and using the simulation. And we estimate the osmotic pressure. Then by using the force balance of, uh, of the osmotic pressure and the uh, surface stress, I'm able to predict the shape of the deforma uh, deforming droplets. Then I compare the, um, the shape, curvature of the radius of curvature uh, from the experiment and the theory, they agree with each other. Right, so um, uh, let me conclude in this way. So since the osmotic pressure is the result of the uh, diffusion, so it's not clear to see if it's a real force or the, um, the real pressure can make some deformation or make some motion to the droplets or the particles. So from the experiment that we see, the osmotic pressure gradient can create the, the drift of a particle. That's the first project and we call it diffuse phoresis. And the second is um, uh, experiment to using the experiment to uh, help us to understand the deformation of water droplets. And I think the first project um, is already discussed by some groups and said under the osmotic pressure, the flow is going to uh, create some drift for the particle. But the second project, I think we can provide some new examples uh, to see the osmotic pressure um, could be treated, I, I said could be treated as a mechanical force. And that force is able to cause some deformation, right? Even without the membrane. Right. Um, so um, last but not least, I want to uh, take some time to uh, acknowledge uh, all the friends and all the people I interact um, in the past six years. Um, it's um, very happy to see everybody in, uh, uh, in, the, in this Christmas city and the Keystone State. I, and I'm going to thank my uh, uh, professor's family and the group members um, in this research and all the friends I met in the uh, Professor Hen and the, the advisors of the advisor and the people from the bioengineering and the people from uh, my class and the people from the, uh, uh, the Department of Physics. And I'm going to thank everybody and stay here and I'm ready for any questions. I think we do have uh, quite a bit of time uh, for anybody, maybe in the room first, and we'll ask uh, the Zoom uh, later, and then you can tell me. So, anyone in the room uh, here? Questions? I guess I can ask a uh, yeah. pretty basic question. Mm -hmm. um, when I see research like this that's incredibly uh, detailed about a very specific topic that I'm not that knowledgeable about, my first question is always. Um, well, why is there a focus of research on this? What is uh, what is the main thing of interest that, that this research is leading to? Okay, I think the main interest is because we uh, don't know uh, the osmotic pressure is a real pressure or not. Um, this is the result of the diffusion, and everybody knows that's caused by diffusion. But is that a real force? Can we treat the osmotic pressure as a mechanical force? So if this is not clear, can we use the osmotic pressure as a model uh, to treat this as a real force and um, do the free body diagrams on the particles or in the liquid to see um, under the osmotic pressure gradient is there any, any motion or deformation? If there is, then we might be treated this as a mechanical force. Yeah. Any question from the, the Zoom? Yeah, so no one actually chat, so maybe. Yeah, you can actually see who's questions. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, is there any acceleration observed by caused by the drift or 
as you mentioned, uh, this kind of force uh, acceleration. Uh, no. So in the water, the viscosity or the resistance is heavy. We call this as over damping system. So it's very hard to see the acceleration. So if there's a speed, then the speed is from the force. So in the water, we don't talk about acceleration okay. because it's too viscous. So then, uh, you mean the particle can be real as a the force are balanced. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in the second part, uh, you uh, process the problem as the osmotic pressure around the oil droplet mm -hmm. and change the shape. Mm -hmm. So. Have you considered the change of hardness of the hardness? Yeah, the, the surrounding material when the liquid. Oh, oh, I see. I, I know what you mean here. So you said because um, um, there are particles inside, so that particle could cause a force uh, on the droplet. So the reason we use osmotic pressure is uh, even those particles close pack, there are a lot of water in the gap. So um, the most of the area on the droplet is water, not the particles. So the particles is not going to collide the droplet. It's the water um, to create a row, not a particle. So after the evaporation, it's not solid. Um, it's still water inside. I'm looking at the, the region oh, okay. when the water and the colloids um, coexist uh, around the droplet. After the dry, if there's no water, then we, we don't talk about osmotic pressure. Yes? Okay, let me see. Uh, I have a question here. What are the implications of being able to identify the osmotic pressure as a mechanical force? All right, so um, good question. So for the um, implications, um, what I can think about here is if we are able to use the water droplet um, as a probe uh, in, the, in the drying fumes, maybe the deformation of the water droplets is able to give us uh, some tool to map the osmotic pressure. And otherwise, um, we can also think about the, the motion of the particles under osmotic pressure. Then in this case, from the motion, and we are able to see the drift speed and we can use the speed um, to derive the osmotic pressure. And, and for the me mechanical force, um, I think it's, uh, it, we can see in this way, if there's a flow and to create some force on the droplets, then uh, we can just say, oh, that force is from the osmotic pressure, uh, even though this is just a diffusion. Any other question? So if that, so I'm going to ask the committee member to stay uh, and the friends and the, uh, the friends. <laughs> <with us. laughs> awesome. Thank you for coming. You're free to take some refreshment. <laughs> now you can eat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you just leave now? Yeah. Do you know how to show the, 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 the menu? Uh, because I just hide the menu. Yeah, no, the, I... Oh. <laughs> what do you want to do? Bring it back? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. I think back. you hit, hit the escape button, Joseph. Okay, hit escape. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, thank you. So I just I just learned that when I was at Lehigh last week. So I'm just <laughs> I'm sharing back. Okay. And I'm going to stop the